who Sophia has bagged $9.2 million in a Series A round of funding from Barings P India, Dallas Venture Capital and others. Blue Sapphire essentially offers a full-stack cybersecurity platform which helps automate cybersecurity operations. Now, the funds will help the startup continue to build and grow the SaaS platform rapidly across North America and India. Now, the full-stack in and predictive analytics platform empowers customers to prevent sophisticated cyber attacks across cloud, on-prem and hybrid work environments. Joining us now to discuss the company's fund allocation plans and growth blueprint is Kiran Vangvaveti, the founder and CEO of Blue Sapphire. Kiran, thank you so much for joining Joining us on the show today. Now, like I said, Blue Sapphire offers a full stack cybersecurity platform which helps automate cybersecurity operations. With most businesses now operating online, the cybersecurity is even more essential than it has ever been. So, how are you helping your clients stay safe online? What's the kind of efficiency you provide to them? That's a very good point. So a lot of businesses are online today, and pretty much everything and anything you see today is online. It brings back the importance of cybersecurity operations, especially in the detection, analysis, response, and remediation space. So we bring in operation efficiency of over 60% in pretty much all security operation platforms we have entered, and all clients we've been working with, a minimum operation efficiency of about 40% in most cases. So the faster you can actually detect a threat, the faster you can respond and remediate it is what really so defined cyber resilience are the capability of the business to sustain in the long term with the given cybersecurity threat environment. All right. Um, like you said, like I said, you've also raised nine point two million dollars. Um, how are you planning on using these funds? Is it mostly going to go towards expansion? Majority of these funds, about seventy percent of the funds, are going to go towards expansion. We have already had um, good market traction, um, good maturity in terms of the product stability and everything else. Uh, being a complete SaaS platform, so the majority of our uh, funds are going to go towards marketing and sales expansions in North America. North America still represents about 90% of our uh, sales. All right, so North America represents about 90% of your sales, so it is going to go towards expansion. Now, your unified platform's capabilities go beyond XDR. Can you take us through the solution that you have on offer, what's in the pipeline? Take us through some of the use cases that you can give us. Sure. Um, so XDR has been, uh, what do you say, uh, a next generation child of an EDR, um, an extension. And we started talking about this platform of beyond XDR, where you know not just detection across endpoints, but also across networks, cloud, remote work points. And then we have the capability to respond to it becomes critical uh, in terms of security operations. And we've been talking about this since 2018. Gartner recognized us as a cool vendor when we started off with this platform, today it's a fairly mature platform and uh, be going beyond detection. XDR is primarily about detection and response in network space and adding EDR to it. So if you look at it that way, uh, response becomes very big uh, key identifier. And we have an agentless response platform which focuses on providing capabilities of response without having to install an agent on every single machine, which is the biggest pain points all enterprises have. All right, now let's talk about numbers then. What's uh, the revenue picture like? What are the targets that you've set for yourself? Where do you see yourself ending this year? Also, what's the revenue mix like between India and North America? So from a revenue mix, I said 90% of our sales already Correct. come from North America and about 10%, but uh, we definitely want to grow larger. The opportunity space in India, the market is huge and growing. Uh, I believe we have about a 10 billion cybersecurity market growing at 27% CAGR. So we do intend to actually uh, make a bigger picture on the Indian market space while growing also in North America. Uh, we do intend to get to a parity of 60-40 between North America and India. All right, and what's your current revenue picture like and what are the targets you've set for yourself? Sure, so we crossed 3 million uh, in ARR, is annual recurring okay. revenue, and we intend to grow it by 3x. All right. Uh, you've also partnered with firms including Ernst & Young, Hexware, Tech Mahindra, CoForge, just to name a few. As a managed security service provider, can you take us through these partnerships? Are you looking for more? What are the kind of clients you cater to? So, being a product company, we've always looked at trying to sell to the client. And early on, back in 2020, we realized that the market is rapidly shifting towards services. And our customer, our end customer is stopping the end client and the service providers started to become our customers. 
So we started shifting our market strategy to focus more on service providers and SIs, and that bet has largely paid off. Uh, we, going forward, we will see more and more traction in the service provider space where we take care of the technology stack and the human stack will potentially be provided by a service provider at the end client. All right, you know, let's talk a little bit about the India business. You said you want to make it eventually 40, 60 between North America and India. Can you tell me how you plan to grow your India business and what are the biggest challenges you face when it comes to cybersecurity out here? Well, the biggest challenge in the Indian market is obviously India is a very price sensitive market. The very reason we are very successful in the services space and in the global market space is also the same problem we find uh, when we start to try and sell in India, right? Uh, as somebody has nicely put it, uh, I was reading an article, they said they ask for a Mercedes Benz for the price of a Maruti. But this also enables us to become that much better and competitive in the global market space. So we are working largely with big uh, distributor networks uh, to reach out to all the end customers with our market segment. That seems to be the best approach to be in India. Oh, all right, Kiran. Well, we're completely out of time and we wish you all the best going forward. But thank you so much for joining us on the show today.